Time. The silent herald of life and death. Success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes the eleventh hour. Of course they are, Jeremy. Oh, they said so? They told you they were? Goodness, what a lot of questions. It'd be a whole lot better for you, young Jeremy, to lie still in that bed and get your old throat better. It is better. That boy doesn't get better all at once from having his tonsils removed. Honest, I'm better. Can I go home this afternoon? When they come, can I go home with them? Not quite yet, Jeremy. <laughs> hey, now, no need to look so sad. Only a few more days. I miss them, you see. Mother and father and Jason... Especially Jason. Well, don't you worry. They'll be here on the dot of three as soon as visiting hour starts. My, Jeremy, that was a short visit they paid you. It's only just gone half past three. They didn't come. They didn't? That's too bad. Didn't they send any message? I don't think so. Oh, well, wouldn't just not come. Maybe something delayed them. I'll call them. That is, if they're not here in five minutes. Well, I, I wouldn't want to... Put you to any trouble, Matron. You're not. After all, I can't have one of my patients upset, can I? I'll go and see if they're on their way. All three of them? Yes. Had on collision. They never had a chance. That poor little boy. Boy? Jeremy. Tonsils. Ward 4. Oh, yeah. yeah what's going to happen to him? I have no idea, Doctor. He has no near relatives living, I understand. It'll be the county orphanage for him, then. All right, uh, better go tell him about the accident. Doctor, he's a gentle little boy. Don't be too brisk, will you? Are they here yet, my folks? Uh, no, Jeremy, I'm, uh, I'm afraid they're not. <laughs> uh, look, we better have a little talk, you and I, man to man, you know? Talk? What about I'm afraid they won't be coming to see you. Why not? There's been an accident. Was Jason sick in the car? He gets that way sometimes. A bad accident. There can have been. Father's a good driver. He's never had any accident. It wasn't his fault. This big truck came around the bend, you see, on the wrong side of the road. And, and crashed into them? Yes. I'm afraid you won't see them again. They're dead? Yes. Oh, they can't be. No, 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 they can't be. Father's a careful driver. I know. I've heard Mother say so. He, he wouldn't have had an accident. He couldn't have. You've got to face it, son. Your family's dead. No! I'm the boy's aunt, Doctor. And as such, as his father's sister, I'm the legal guardian. But, Miss Tessa... Yes, well, go on. What are we going to say? You're not married yourself, are you? You've no children. How would you know about... About bringing up a small uh... boy? Is that for you to discuss, Doctor? It's my duty to care for my dead brother's son. I, I don't know what the orphanage people will say. I don't care a row of pins what they say. They probably already said that I'm an eccentric old maid who lives her life in the seclusion of that crazy big old house on the hill and that I shouldn't have charge of a canary bird, let alone a boy. But come on, isn't that so? I don't see how you're going to convince them otherwise, Miss Tesser. Are they here now, in the hospital? Mrs. Appleby is here, talking with Matron. Very well. Take me to her. Miss Tessa, it's quite out of the question. For what reason, Mrs. Appleby? A child will need a healthy home environment. Companions of his own age, proper schooling, proper discipline. He needs family, Mrs. Appleby. I am all he has left. He doesn't know you. Does he know you? There are no legal objections to my obtaining custody of my nephew. No, but... But what? Well, you know what they say. That I'm a crazy old spinster. 
he's a very disturbed little boy. All the more reason he should live somewhere quiet. You're a formidable woman, Miss Tessa. I represent security to him, Mrs. Appleby. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I shall have to discuss it with the attorneys. My brother's attorney. And the governors of the orphanage. You see, we'd already made provisions for the boy. Then unmake them. Jeremy comes home with me. Well, Jeremy, what do you think of my house? It's big. Yes, you're right. My father left it to me in his will, you see. I was brought up here. It's the only home I've ever known. Almost like a castle. Oh, not quite so large. But it's nice. I'm glad you think so. And your bedroom, you like that? It, it's different from my real room. My room at home. It's next to mine. So that if I have a bad dream at night, I can call out and you'll hear. If, if you? Yes. Do you have bad dreams sometimes? Oh, yes, Jeremy. I have them every night. Well, maybe the dessert type fix for tonight will keep them away. Do you like strawberry shortcake? Strawberry shortcake? If you come and help me whip the cream for it, we can have supper as soon as I fry the chicken. Mom, are there visitors here? No, child. Only you and me. I don't care over much for visitors. He has questions, don't he? About your folks. Now, now, I can't have tears in the whipped cream. But make it all salty. <laughs> now you dry your eyes and come along into the kitchen. Of course he's all right, Mrs. Appleby. Why shouldn't he be? I'd like to see him, Miss Tessa. That won't be possible, I'm afraid. I have a right to. Oh, a letter from the orphanage authorities, I suppose. Being a district visitor, it is my duty to watch over poor children like Jeremy. He's busy right now. Doing what? In the attic. Not that it's any of your business. The attic. How unhealthy. Aunt Tessa? Yes, child? I found the soldiers. Bring them down here, then. They're beautiful. I don't think there is anything else for you to do here, Mrs. Appleby. I'm sure your good works keep you busy around the town. I wouldn't want to detain you. Good morning, Mrs. Appleby. I'll be back, Miss Tessa. Oh, take your time. They're beautiful, Aunt Tessa. You know what they represent, of course. The blue and the gray. Sure, of course I do. Was there someone here? What makes you ask? Heard the door close. Was it someone come to get me? No one's going to get you, child. Not while I have breath in my body. I guess you want to play with the soldiers right away, don't you? Yes, please, Mom. And you'd like to play in the solarium with me, wouldn't you? Me, I? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, I, it, it's the most beautiful room I ever saw in my life, Aunt Tessa. Old-fashioned. That's what folks say. Dark and musty, they say. What do I want with all those ferns and lilies in the fountain and a floor checkered with marble squares? They don't know, do they? Shall I close the door? Yes, child. We don't want the front doorbell disturbing us, now, do we? Now, mind where you tread, Jeremy. Why, Mom? There's a loose tile on this floor. I wouldn't want you hurting yourself. A loose one? There, right under the statue. Uh, this side? Don't tread on it, child. It's, it's loose, like I said. It's, it's taken to shifting, now, ma'am. It, it's scary. Nonsense. Oh, it, there's a shadow on it. Blacker than anything I've ever seen. Only the statue casting its shadow. But it looks like there's no tile there at all. Only a, a great blackness going down. Deep down. Only a piece of marble, Jeremy. The statue looks at it. And the shadow goes so deep, so deep down, you, you can't see where it ends. Your poor parents were hit by a truck boy. <laughs> That's the truth. Because I, I wouldn't like to think they were... Down there in, in, in the shadow. They're not. Now, you set the soldiers out and I'll fetch a piece of my new baked apple pie. But I don't think I want one more. With raisins? Cinnamon? long as that? One year exactly, Matron. And he's still there with her? Happy too, by all accounts. Whose account? Miss Tessa's? He's settling down just fine. 
He can't be permitted to remain with her, though. Of course he can't. What's your objection, Mrs. Appleby? It's not healthy. I think she cares about the boy. She's a crazy old spinster, Doctor. The town eccentric. Why, you want me to look at her house, all those balconies and spires, so dark and forbidding inside. Of course. I've never visited her, but I've heard stories. Old books and carpets, dark old rooms, winding passages. It doesn't sound very nice for the boy. I think he finds it very nice. But he can't stay there. Definitely not. Why not? It's the state's duty to care for him. Miss Tessa's his family. An eccentric old maid. I thought I was oh. just come here. Jeff, <laughs> have you been listening? <laughs> Why, uh, yes, Jeremy, come along in. We were um, just talking about you. Yes, I know. I heard what she said. What's eccentric mean? Whatever ails you, boy. Not you, Mom. A head on broken or something? No. Nope. Then what's wrong? All through supper, you kept staring at me. Now, what is it? Something happened when you went into town yesterday? Aunt Tessa, what's eccentric mean? Who did you hear say it? Outside the doctor's room. I, I didn't mean to listen, but the door was open and I couldn't help hearing. Hearing who? And Mrs. Appleby and Matron were in there with the doctor and they were talking. About me? And me as well. Hmm. Now, hand me the big dictionary, will you? This one? That's right. You bring it over here. Thank you. Eccentric. Yes, here it is. Irregular. Odd. Whimsical. Odd. Well, there was something else. Old maid. Look for it. Go on. Now, don't pretend to me you can't read a dictionary. Is that what they called me? Yes. Hmm. Now, isn't that just like them? I can't find it. Old maid? Oh, it's not here. Hmm. It means a spinster, an unmarried lady. An odd, unmarried lady. That's what they've always thought of me. Didn't she ever have a husband, Aunt Tessa? Nearly had one once. But he told me one day, right here... In the solarium. He told me he'd found somebody else. Did he marry her instead of you? Matter of fact, no, he didn't. He stepped on the... Well, he, he, he just dropped out of sight. Now, that's enough, child. I don't want to talk about it no more. So you've lost someone as well as me. I guess I have, child. Kind of helps, if you know what I mean. I don't. Well, makes me feel I'm not the only one. It makes me feel we're sort of together. Is that so? Well, maybe you're right. Now, you let me get on with this knitting, child. I thought you were setting up the soldiers. Yes, I am. Right there, so near the statue. And Tessa, where did you get him? My daddy brought that. All the way from Greece. Piraeus. A long while ago. Now, you bring the atlas later on, and I'll show you where that is. Greece? The whole thing used to scare me when I was little. The way the eyes kind of follow a person around the room. I know. He watches me, too. I tried to move it out once. By yourself? Yep. Well, was that when your hand got hurt? You've got sharp eyes, haven't you? Oh, I saw your hand when I was first here. The way the one's all curled up like a bird's claw. Well, was that because you tried to move the statue? Of course not. Anyways, it seemed better to leave it where it is. My daddy said it was some pagan god or other. I can't rightly remember which one. And he said the place he got it from set great store by it. He said every home needs a, a household protector. <laughs> and he's mine. He's mine, too. When I was first here, he used to scare me. He doesn't know. He's like a friend. That's why I set the soldiers up near him, so he can watch the battle. Sorry, I'd better warn you, Miss Tessa, they're on the war path again. Why can't they mind their own business? They reckon it is their business. Don't say you have anything better to do? Doctor, you've seen the boy. What do you think? I think he's happy and well cared for, Miss Tessa. A different child from a year ago. We got along well enough. When he first came, I said to myself that what I couldn't win with face and form, me not being young nor pretty, I'd get with hardened hand. <laughs> 
Strawberry shortcake, <laughs> apple pie, fried chicken. You're going to enjoy good food. <laughs> He's put on weight. He smiles. He talks. He'll do, Doctor. It's only been a year, after all, since his folks were killed. Mm. Every day, he's a mite stronger. He hasn't had a crying spell in weeks now. Soon enough, he'll be playing in the streets with all those rough town urchins and forgetting all about his poor old aunt. Oh, I don't think he'll do that. It's what I aim to see, Doctor. It's the way it should go. I wouldn't want to keep him tied to me, would I? How long were you living on your own? Fifteen years. Fifteen years alone. And then to find this little ray of sunshine. And you say they're going to have another try at taking him away from me? Looks like it. Mrs. Appleby. Hmm. Crab apple, more like. She's worried about his schooling. Jealous, I'd say. Mm, that's possible. Jealous of me. <laughs> Isn't that something to smile over, Doctor? She who's been married these 20 years with four children of her own. And she's jealous. That an eccentric old maid like me should have a short while of happiness in life. Well, whatever a is, Miss Tessa, she'll be paying you a visit soon. Better be prepared. Well, I'm prepared, Doctor. Never fear. She won't take Jeremy from me unless he's a mind to go. And I don't think he has. Not yet a while. I shall have to go there and talk to her. Make her see reason. It's not right, Matron. I said it over a year ago when the poor child was orphaned. It's the state's duty, I said, to care for him. You're quite right, Mrs. Appleby. And the state never shirks its duty. I shall go up the hill to that awful, dark old house. And I shall tell her that unless she's sensible, unless she cooperates, I'll get a court order and have the child removed from her care. <laughs> care? Mind you, Mrs. Appleby, Jeremy didn't look unhappy last time I saw him in town. If you saw him in town, he was probably happy to be away from her. And there's no denying he's healthy. Oh, what can she feed him on? What kind of strange food do you think she makes? Old witch, if you ask me. You're quite right, of course. It's not a good environment for a young boy. It is not. Very well, we're agreed. I'll go and talk to her. And if that doesn't work, I'll get Jeremy removed from her officially. You, um... Ever thought about leaving here and going away to school, Jeremy? Away? Well, well, sooner or later, you'll have to. Well, not yet, Aunt Tessa. Oh, not yet, no, but, but when you're older. I could come back for vacations, couldn't I? Y you wouldn't send me away forever. Oh, I'd need my head examined to do that. <laughs> well, maybe, when I'm older. If I could go someplace not too far away and, and come back here when there's no school. That's a promise. Aunt Tessa? May I bring my soldiers in here? I think so. Thank you. A ray of sunshine in my life. And they want to take him away from me. I'll fight them, though. Yes. I'll not have my life destroyed again. You don't mind me playing armies in the solarium, do you? If I minded, you'd not be in here. It's a good place, you see, for battles. All these ferns and things for, for ambushes. Huh. And the statue watching it. Of course, I have to be very careful I don't let any soldiers step on the dark tile. What would happen if they did? They'd disappear, wouldn't they? They'd go deep down where no one would ever see them again. Child, you're imagining it. It's only a piece of black marble with a shadow cast down by the statue. Mm, that's what you say, Aunt Tessa. But I know different. So do you, really. This time I think I'm going to have the gray army win. Stuff and nonsense, child. You've read my daddy's book. That isn't how the war went. It was the North one, the blues. I know. That's why I'm going to do it. You see, I think sometimes that the weak side should have a chance to win, too. I think that's a fine idea, Jeremy. You do it just that way. But maybe you'll pass my knitting before the first shot's fired. <laughs> sure, Aunt Tessie. It's nice, isn't it? Just the two of us here together. It's nice, child. Yeah. Oh, drat. Maybe it'll go away. Oh, you answer it, will you? I'm going to start the supper cooking. If they won't go away, you bring them in here. Well, good afternoon, ma'am. May I come in, Jeremy? Well, yes, you must. Thank you. 
And uh, where is your aunt? She's busy, Mrs. Appleby. Not too busy to see me, I hope. Well, you better come into the solarium. Solarium? Mrs. Crab Apple. <laughs> Appleby. Miss Tether, there is something that you and I have to discuss. Alone. I know what you've come for. I've been expecting you. Send the boy away so we can talk, will you? It's him you've come to talk about. He's a right to hear, so speak your piece or get out of my house. Jeremy, you stay right there. Yes, I'm just... I'll come straight to the point. It's high time this poor child was removed from this house and sent to a proper environment. Oh? You've been a stubborn old woman long enough, Miss Tessa. You see anything wrong with the child? No, but... Undernourished, pale, unhappy? No, but... but... Sick, maybe. Miserable. Unhealthy. If you won't cooperate, I'm going to get a court order. Oh, be reasonable. Surely you realize this is no fit atmosphere for a young child. You want me to give him up? Of course. And Tessa? She wants to take me away? Yes, child, she does. But don't you fret. I won't allow it. You're being very obstinate. I fought you once, and I'll fight you again. You keep away from me. Aunt Tessa! Tell her to watch out! Tell her to watch where she's stepping! I wouldn't let a meddling fool like you touch one hair on the boy's head. Very well. If that's the way you insist on having it, I'll be here with the court order first thing in the morning. You get the boy ready to leave with me and the sheriff. The tile! And Tessa! He's not going anywhere, Mrs. Appleby. Miss Tessa, keep away from me. Keep away! she has. She's down there. He, she's down the deep darkness. The, the shadows follow her up. I saw it. I saw it go. Nonsense, child. I saw her out of the door. But she didn't. One second she was there, the next she, she gone into the blackness. Sharon, all those fancies. It's only a black marble tile. Feel it. Touch it. Well, come on. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. But, but I saw. I saw. Now, supper. Broiled steak, don't you think? With my homemade ice cream for dessert. Come along and give me a hand, Jeremy. She went out of the door? Of course. I didn't see her go. You had your hand so tight over your eyes, you couldn't see anything. So, so, so she didn't step on the black tile? Well, it wasn't anything to do with the statue? Did you think it was? You said every home... Need to protect you. Well, this home's got three, hasn't it? You, me, and him. And Tessa, can I become eccentric too? I'd very much like to. <laughs> I can stay? As long as you care to, Jeremy. Jeremy.